Do numbers lie? Nine career interceptions for Deshaun Elliott. You know, interceptions, it's a sexy stat. But how many of those interceptions were actually sexy? Brendan Albert and I are here to discuss Deshaun Elliott on, the, on this uh, little film room episode where we're talking to everybody in the NFL draft. And Deshaun Elliott is our latest culprit. Yeah, he's our big thumper. You know, he's a big thumping, strong safety. Numbers here, you look at it, if you look at his resume on paper, nine interceptions, three forced fumbles in 2017, you're looking thinking, damn, that looks awesome. Well, if we're going to look at numbers here, guys, let me kind of pull something up really quick here. Let me kind of share with you guys really quick some other numbers that don't look as exciting here. Deshaun Elliott, 40-yard dash, 458. That's going to be the slowest of any of the guys that we reviewed. Also in comparison, that's slower than his teammate, Malik Jefferson, who ran a 4.52. Bench press was fine, 15. On the vert, 36. A little light than you would like. Most of the guys that are going to be you know, in his range of safeties are above 35. Some guys are close, but those elite guys are closer to 40. Broad jump, okay, good, not great, 121. And then he shut it down, didn't do a ton more. To be honest with you, I think that's probably a smart decision on his point. I don't think he is a combine workout warrior, and these are the concerns you have. When you watch his film, he's not twitchy. He's not super rangy. He's not overly athletic. So a thing like the combine isn't great for him. Numbers in production look fantastic. So if you're someone who was all is about stats, he's going to look great to you. But go back and watch the Iowa State tape, for example. Two of his interceptions hit him square in the chest. And there are a couple other games that are tips and overthrows, and that's really where he makes his living. So if you're a positive guy, you're saying, hey, he's getting to the ball, good things are happening. Absolutely. If you're a negative guy, he's not really making the interceptions. The ball is just kind of more finding him. Yeah, so basically you said it very nicely, but he's kind of stiff. And uh, we're going to get into that. But uh, the good play is to start. Uh, he, he closes. He takes good angles. I mean, you talked about it. He's a thumper, strong safety type. That's what he does well, and that's what we're going to be seeing here on this this first play here. Yeah, I mean, again, when you play in the, you play in the uh, Big 12 there, you're essentially playing seven-on-seven seven football every single day. So it's all about being able to move sideline to sideline and tackle in space. Yep. You certainly can. So we're going to see him, number four, does a great job coming downhill, attacking the option, goes for the pitch man. Awesome job here being low, and then a great roll tackle to secure it for a tackle for loss. Well, let's play it normal so you can see this. And he's closing pretty quickly. And you know what, guys? This is underrated. But if you go back and watch his nose, his nose is always towards the near hip of the running back. Near hip, near hair, nip it, perfect. This is a great job of him tackling in space. This is one of his best abilities. So you talked about those interceptions. And I'll tell you what, on tape, from what I saw, uh, only one of his interceptions was like where he didn't have the ball thrown right at him. And we're going to see it here. Here's one of those deflections. He takes it back for a score. This is a pick six, so he's fighting the end zone. That's awesome. But yeah. uh, we, we talked about, you know, sexy stats. Is this a sexy interception? Look, the good news is, yeah, the ball's there. But you know what? He lined up there. I mean, like, him lining up there isn't his decision. He wasn't going to like, hmm, I'm going to line up here today. No, that was coaching. Coaching told him where to line up. If you look at it, this ball is pretty much thrown. All he has to do is run straight forward. That, that ball is more finding him. Now, if I'm positive guy – Shows great ability to catch a low ball there. That's not exactly an easy play. And then obviously he's athletic enough to get into the end zone. But I'm not going to be like, oh, my gosh, look at his ball production here when a ball pretty much comes right into his zone. And, uh, you know, when I send you the clips to look at, I, I sent you like three, I think it was three or four interceptions where the ball was literally thrown right to him because it was overthrown by the quarterback. Too many of his interceptions, he is breaking straight downhill. And the big reason I say that's a problem is it because it's not showing range. Range, when you hear that term, is when you're moving laterally or you have to go back and, and chase a ball down a la the Willie Mays catch, kind of things like that. When you're making interceptions, breaking straight downhill, it's really more about coaching lining you up in the right spot. Yeah. All right, next thing we're going to look at, cover three robber. So whenever the play is in front of him and he can jump it, he looks pretty good. It's kind of like what Ronnie Harrison with Alabama. And we're going to see a good example of it here. And let's talk about what robber means here first. So what robber means is, and Adrian's going to pause it and do a great job for us. Thank you, buddy. So 
what we're going to see here is cover three robber. So we can see right off the jump here, top of the screen, we have one corner. He's already in a bail situation. Bottom of the screen, we have another corner in the number five. He's in another bail situation. These two guys are going to be deep thirds. Then we're going to have a safety, which isn't in the screen here. He's going to be on the – our defense is right hash, offense is left hash, closer to the 50. He's going to be the middle third, which means Elliot here, number four, he's at the near hash at about the – oh, let's say here, it's called the 47-yard line. Anytime color comes across his face, he gets to fire. This is awesome. For strong safeties, this is where you see those big light-up hits. This is where you see the big interception, things like that. And this is a great example. He does a good job here of in a robber position coming out downhill. This is where you see Cam Chancellor playing. So a cover three situation, this is a fantastic fit for Deshaun Elliott. Yeah. You can see he does a good job breaking on the ball. He almost had himself another pick. Yeah. And you know what? That one would have been on him. That one would absolutely would be a true interception. I will 100% give him that. That would have been a sexy interception. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, I'll give him that. And you know what? This is a great play here. That that to me is more impressive than his pick six, even though the pick six is worth all you know all the points. But I 100% agree with that, Adrian. That's 100% true. And you know what? This goes down in the stat in the stat book as a PBU. But to me, I'm with you, Adrian. As a coach, if I was his coach at UT, I'd be more excited about that than the pick six. Yep. All right. So we're gonna see basically the same thing again, if if I remember correctly. Uh, he he breaks downhill, he makes a good play. So we'll get to that right now. He had a great game against SC. I mean, yes, his yeah. game against SC was really good. Does a nice job here of getting physical with the tight end and then does a great job of getting his hand inside the cookie jar and just being really physical. That's fourth and four. So what he does here is he pretty much sets his feet at the sticks and he's saying, I'm waiting for that tight end to make a move. And as soon as the tight end makes a move, I'm firing my gun because I know on fourth and four, it's very, very unlikely I'm going to see a double move and definitely not from a tight end. So if a tight end makes a move in or out, I'm firing my gun. Very, very physical right here, which I like. And then does a good job of planting that left foot and getting underneath it here. Yeah, so I was wrong about him coming downhill. But you can see the physicality that he plays with. He's, he's not afraid to use his hands. No, he's great against tight ends. But if you're going to put him against like a tight end like an Evan Ingram who's closer to a receiver, I don't like that matchup. If you no. get him a more of a true physical tight end, yeah, I'm okay with this. Yeah. And there you go. And he uses a, what, yeah, the glove technique there to, to knock that pass away. Absolutely. All right. So some bad. Uh, this is, you know, he has a big hit here uh, where he pries the ball free. But what, what are you seeing here that, that you don't like, Brendan? You know, here's the thing. When we talk about big hits, you know, I talked about the Ryan Howard situation, home run or strikeout. And that's some concern you see sometimes here. The truth is, if on this clip, if he does a better job at being the true middle third safety, he should pick this off. And it shouldn't be a big hit. And he should be more excited about getting to the middle of the field. So if we look at it here, you see him. He's at the hash. You see how he's already turning his shoulders, guys? Well, if he's turning his shoulders, now he has to turn his shoulders here, and then he has to turn and run. Instead, what he should do is stay square in his pedal, get to the middle of the field, and then if there's a ball coming across the middle – if he stays in his pedal, he can break laterally quicker versus what he does here. He turns, and then he has to run again. He's making too much added motion here. He shouldn't need to do this. Yeah. I mean, hey, nice job breaking the ball free. You know, you can see the physicality that he plays with, but he could have put himself in a better position. Absolutely. All right. So we're going to look at him trying to backpedal, and uh, this isn't good. Not ideal. You know, you can see here, very high in the pedal, very similar to what we talked about when we watched Shaquem Griffin's tape earlier today. Gets very, very high in his pedal here. And then you see a lot of separation. I just yeah. wonder, like, did he think he was going against, like, Rocket Ishmael or a guy like <laughs> Mike Wallace that he needed to be 30 yards away? Because the depth here, man, his, because he's so high in his back pedal, it takes him so long to settle his feet and come downhill – and that's what creates this really large area of space. He's 10 yards behind. It's not good. I mean, look, so high in his pedal. All of his other teammates are much lower. He gets so high in his pedal because he starts to pedal closer to his heels than on his toes. I mean, this is just a simple stop route, and he's 10 yards behind it. 
the fortunate thing about this play is he's a very good tackler in space, so I'm not worried about a ton of yak ability. But when you go to the league, and this is Antonio Brown, and you're one and one in space, you can be a very good tackler in space. But Antonio Brown is one of the best players in space, and he will go up against guys like that in the league. Yeah, if you give Antonio Brown 10 yards, he's cutting inside, he's scoring a touchdown. No question. So that's Even a guy like Nelson Aguilar would eat him alive with that much room. Yeah. Absolutely would take his lunch. Imagine if we would have said that a year ago. Nelson Here's Aguilar. Me. Space. All right, so one last move. Uh, this is a deep completion here, and, and he's in the open field, and I, I don't know what the hell he's doing. He just stops. This was one of those plays where you're kind of just, you know, as a college coach, you would put this on the film room, and you would kind of just let it go quiet because there's not much to say, and you're just like, right about here, he's going to start to break down, and I have no idea why. The only reason I can think here is his eyes, and I talked about this earlier when they were playing TCU, his eyes normally are at the hip. His eyes this time are going to be up around the face mask and helmet of where this receiver is going to catch the ball. And because that receiver is going to do all that shimmy and shaking and all that BS of the upper body, Elliot, because his eyes are looking at it, is able to buy it. If he keeps his eyes on the hips, he's not going to be able to do that stupid stutter step he takes here. Yeah. And we're going to see it one more time. So Mason Rudolph, pretty good deep throw of the football. Yep. Doesn't have to do much there because the receiver's wide open, quarterback fell down, and there you go. It's the end of our video. Seven clips. Not a lot with Elliott. I mean, Elliott, I think everyone – I think if you really look into Elliott's stuff, you'll see his stats and his numbers will excite you, and I totally get that. But that tip interception against UCLA – or USC, excuse me – he had two pretty much throws that hit him right in the chest against Iowa State. That's all, a third of his interceptions are pretty much gimme balls right there. Yeah. I'm not knocking him. I'm just making sure that if we're grading him, we need to grade him fairly. Let's not say, oh, he had nine interceptions. I would say he had six interceptions, and three of them were hit him right in the chest. And I would even argue probably two of the other ones we didn't look at were tip balls that were more found balls than true interceptions. Yep. With Elliott, he's a thumper. He's going to be a guy in, in the box. You do not want him over the top. Very similar issues as some of the other safeties we've talked about. Where do I see him going? I see him going probably as like the eighth, anywhere from like the sixth through the eighth for safety taken. That's kind of how I see him. I don't think he's got a ton of upside because his athletic ability is pretty low. His future might be at a will linebacker position and being a stud on special teams. I, I like that. I like that. Another Dion Buchanan situation here. Yep, absolutely. I think, you know, a situation would be like if you're a team like Seattle and you know, hey, the end of Camp Chancellor is coming, you probably could get him in the fourth, fifth, sixth round, and maybe he's a guy you can groom into that. But just like the Seahawks do with Camp Chancellor, you very rarely see Camp Chancellor as a single high safety. Yeah, so we're looking at a situation here where we're probably going to be wrong. He's probably going to get like 10, or 10 interceptions a season. They're all going to be sexy interceptions. You, you know how it is. Oh, of course. I mean, that's just karma. That's, that's how life always works, isn't it? Yeah, you know, that, that, that is the way it works. All right, that's Brendan Albert. I'm Adrian Fetchew. That's Deshaun Elliott. We're out. Peace. Appreciate it.